She's considered the first lady of the pipe organ. may have traveled the globe with her since 1982 on the joy of music, as she's played historic organs in magnificent cathedrals. Diane Bish, the subject of this edition of Spiritual Journey. The sound of the organ in the sanctuary at Johns Creek United Methodist Church resonates with the skillful, soulful Diane Bish at the keyboards, pedals, and stops, decades after her musical talents were first discovered. I was born in Wichita, Kansas, and uh, there's a lot of culture in Wichita. People wouldn't think that, but, you know, it's in the middle of the country and it's, you know, flat farmland and whatever. And what's in Wichita? Well, it was amazing. Uh, the music and the culture that I had there, I, uh, there was an organ in my high school of 3,000 students. And I used to play concertos with the orchestra. I used to play assemblies. Uh, the kids used to love it because at Halloween, you know, I'd dress up like a witch and I'd play the Toccata and Fugue in D minor. And uh, I'd entertain them. And of course, you have, we had a big auditorium, 3,000 students, and most of those students had never even heard an organ before. So I had to make them interested in, in the organ, in the music of the organ. So I would, that's really where I learned to not only play the organ, but to get people involved. And uh, on the joy of music today, that is so important, is to get people involved who maybe have never seen an organ before. But anyway, the, there was a lot of culture, and I uh, had competitions, which I uh, entered in one competition I won, and I was to play a concert for having won the competition. and. I, I was roller skating and I broke my arm so I couldn't I couldn't play that concert after I won the competition and I have a history of that now in my life of doing something before you know breaking my arm or falling and fracturing my my shoulder but still uh, so I was in a lot of competitions and uh, I I love competition she started on the piano at age six, and once her feet could reach the pedals at 14, she turned fortuitously to the organ. You know, my parents did not make me practice. I, I loved to practice because I was challenged by the music, and I was, especially when I started taking organ, I was in junior high, and uh, I loved the organ. I had heard it on the radio, the, uh, the uh, Mormon Tabernacle Choir and organ. I'd heard the organ in church, and uh, I loved the organ because of uh, there was so much, so many different sounds that you can make. The organ is like an orchestra. I mean, it has oboes and it has violins and trombones and uh, all the sounds in an orchestra and even more. So all of those different sounds I could make. Plus, I really love the idea that you, you found the organ in churches and you could really worship God, even at that young age. 
I, uh, I really wanted to, to worship God and to show forth His greatness in the music. And that was always very important to me. And I always realized too at an early age that you needed to be excellent at what you did if you were going to uphold the name of Christ in your music. My parents took me to church. My mother prayed for me. We uh, always, in the morning, we would read the Bible. And uh, so, uh, really, at a young age, I, I found a really personal relationship with Christ, which was so meaningful and gave me guidance for, the, for my life. Uh, I used to, to, sometimes I would carry a Bible to school um, because I, I loved the Bible. I loved to talk to people. When I was in high school and junior high, I used to talk to my friends about knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior because He had changed my life. And that meant everything to me. And it has all my life. Uh, that's my meaning for living. I heard the gospel story and, and heard the stories of Jesus and heard the story of God's love. And uh, it just, as a teenager, uh, you know, it changed my life as well because it gave me reason, gave me reason to live, gave me direction for my life. I always knew I wanted to be in music. I was, I was challenged to do it very well. My father was an artist, that's another thing. One of the best, he, he made, uh, received many awards in Kansas for his artwork. And, uh, and so I have always loved art, so art was something to me that I, I had an eye for art. I had an eye for looking at things and seeing beauty in everything, seeing what was interesting, what was important, what was colorful, what was not interesting, uh, beauty in nature. And today on The Joy of Music, I have to, you know, many times I'll say to the cameraman, shoot that, uh, shoot it this way, you know, shoot, give it perspective, shoot through the bush, shoot through the tree, shoot this. And uh, it's that the uh, notice of detail in not that art gave me that has really helped me in my work. My mother played the piano and the organ, actually. And uh, so she influenced me and every Saturday morning we would, uh, Saturday afternoon, I mean, she would sit me down and we would listen to the Met, to the opera, the Metropolitan Opera. And uh, I even bought an opera book. And so I knew the stories of the opera and I would, I got a music stand and I conducted those operas. I knew that music and I loved it. And so that gave me a, uh, that gave me a love for not, not just my music, but for the music of others, for singing, for instrumentalists, for composition. All these things were a part of my upbringing. Mildred Andrews was my teacher uh, in college, well actually I first went to Asbury College for two years. 
And uh, then I went to the Oklahoma University because I was uh, going past where the lady at Asbury could teach me. So probably the greatest organ teacher in the world at that time was at the University of Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, and so I went there. And what, what a great inspiration she was. She, uh, she knew how to challenge me. She knew how to challenge every student, but to me, she would say, now this is a very difficult piece and not very many people can play it. So she knew I, she knew I would just eat it up and very quickly. But to another student, she would say, now this piece is not so hard, so you won't have any trouble with it. She knew the, she knew what would challenge to make each student do what they should do. So um, she gave me repertoire much, repertoire very difficult repertoire. And memorize, we had to memorize everything. She put me in national competitions. She put me, I was in national composition competitions. And I, I, I won those. And uh, so that challenged me even more to, to keep going that I, I knew that I had a, a real gift for, for composition and for the organ. I uh, was a uh, Delta Gamma, I was in the Delta Gamma house. And uh, I, every day when I came back from, from the music school, there was a little chapel, it was, it was about a block from the Delta Gamma house. I would go to that chapel first and I would just sit down and pray and then pray that I could be a, a witness, an example to the girls in the, in the house, in the Delta Gamma house, to, to uh, tell, tell them about the love of God. Uh, so it wasn't just through music that I wanted to do that, but it was through living the people that were around me. And that was very important to me. And that made all the difference in the world in my life in college was sharing my faith with people and praying for them and seeing their lives change and uh, making such wonderful friends uh, that way. And the, so many people would come to me when they were in need uh, you know, because they knew that, that uh, my faith was so important to me. I received a year's grant to study at the Amsterdam Conservatory. So I lived in Amsterdam for a year and I s studied harpsichord, chamber music, and organ with the great Gustav Leonhardt. And uh, he taught me the, how each note of music, each part of a phrase, each phrase was so important in the music. And he would say, now, why don't you give me a lecture on this last phrase of music? So I would have to sit and I'd, I would have to talk about the phrasing and, and, and the note and, the, and uh, analyze the music and what I was doing and uh, the style of music. So that taught me a great deal. And I used to practice at the uh, French church in Amsterdam. Every day I had a little car, I'd drive, drive down there and I would, uh, I had a little sports car. It was a red, red Triumph. And I'd drive downtown Amsterdam to the church and practice. And it was freezing cold in the church in the winter time. So I got used to, got used to that, playing in freezing cold temperatures. And now even today in the Joy of Music, a lot of these cathedrals are very cold on the inside. And uh, so you have to get used to that. So I studied in Europe, but I also uh, traveled a lot when I was over there and I, 
I got to go to many cathedrals and churches and see the churches are the central part of every town, every in Europe. Uh, the spires, they, they were the middle of life for people. They, and back in the, you know, 1300, 1400s, the, the great cathedrals or the small churches, they are still at the center of life in, in those towns. first uh, travels to Europe, I went to the Strasbourg Cathedral in Strasbourg, France, which is today my favorite cathedral. Uh, the organ there is spectacular. And it's way 80, about 80 feet high up on the wall, and you sit up in the middle of the pipes. I always tell the story of that because in order to get to that organ, you have to go up over 100 circular stairs and then out on the roof out on the catwalks of the roof, and then you go into a green door uh, that takes you into the organ loft, which is where you play. Nobody can see you downstairs. You're up in the middle of the pipes. Most European organs are like that. But I heard that organ in Strasbourg when I was in my teens, and uh, that was incredible. And I said to myself, I said, I'm going to come back here and play this organ. And I've gone back many times and recorded on that organ. The thing about many of these historical churches in Europe that I have, that has meant so much to me as you're playing the same organs that the great composers played in Merseburg, Germany. That is where Liszt wrote some of his music for. So you're playing that organ. Uh, in Halle, Germany, you're playing the organ where Handel played. In uh, Harlem, Holland, we have recorded on the organ that Mozart and Handel both came to play because it, it was, even in Mozart's day, was so spectacular. And then the organ uh, at La Madeleine in Paris were Saint-Saëns and many, uh, and then the organ that Franck saved or Franck in Paris at uh, Saint Clotilde. So, and then just to play the organs themselves, um, the organs that Vidor played, the great French composers, um, the Notre Dame, where I played several concerts. And I used to sit in, when I also lived in Paris, I used to go up to the organ loft of Saint Sulpice with Dupre, who was the famous organist at Saint Sulpice and sit on the organ bench with him while he played the services. And then also uh, at Notre Dame, I used to go from Saint-Sulpice to Notre Dame and be there when, when the very well-known Cochereau uh, was playing for the services. And that was so special to, to be in those places, to experience their improvisations and their playing and the organs and the cathedrals. And uh, uh, to be able 
to bring those back to people's living rooms on television. When I started this show, and even when I started to play concerts, I felt I had seen a lot of concerts where women especially, because men can wear tuxedos, but they wore kind of dull clothes and nothing, you know, and things that weren't easy to play the organ, you know, skirts maybe, because you play the pedals and so forth. So I designed dresses, had dresses designed, which were long dresses like an opera singer would wear or something you know, that people love to look at. Uh, and, and even I put rhinestones on my shoes so people will have something to look at on my shoes as well. And uh, that just is something I continued, and especially in these very dark cathedrals where I play a lot, if I, if I, it gets people's attentions if they're going through the dial of a television and they all of a sudden see this, <laughs> this organ in this dark cathedral with this, with the shiny, with a beautiful dress or like the dress I have on to, today or they immediately will stop. I've had so many letters from people that say, I love your, we love your clothes. We just, I just got a letter from Germany from a lady who said, we, we love your music. And, and she says, I just love your clothes. I would love to wear clothes like that. She said, but I'm too old. She said, I'm in my 80s. And I hope she would say that. Because she said, I'm 88. And I'm, I, I think they're just, they're, <laughs> I just can't wear those kind of clothes anymore. But she said, I love them. Well, it's absolutely a ministry. The, the joy of music, the organ is the platform for the joy of music. The organ is what I do. But all these great churches were built by people of faith. And the organ is at the center of those churches and the life of the church. And whenever I sit in these great cathedrals and, and play, the stained glass windows, the art, the architecture, which is all a part of the joy of music, is a great inspiration. That, uh, an inspiration to me. And I want to bring the spiritual inspiration, not just musical inspiration, but the beauty of, of the windows, the stories of the windows, of the Bible stories in the windows. So often they are of uh, uh, Christ and the Lamb and uh, pictures of stories of the Bible. They just so uh, inspire me. And that I tried, uh, along with the music, I always play a hymn in my programs in the Joy Music. Always play a hymn because these organs have been playing the great hymns of faith for years and years, and most people never get to hear a hymn, just a straight hymn being played on a magnificent organ in a great church or cathedral. The spiritual inspiration is a very important part. That, that is the reason I do the joy music not just to spread the organ which, uh, and the music of the organ, which I want to do, but the great, um, the great power of the gospel which, which has been lived in these churches, the music of Johann Sebastian Bach, who signed his music to God be the glory in, in the name of Jesus, and uh, so much of the music has been inspired by God himself. So to reach out to people through the organ, through those 
through scenery, beautiful landscapes and mountains and lakes and flowers. We need to have the experience of relating, relating, bring a, bringing a message, bringing hope, faith, joy, love through our music, uh, spiritual inspiration. We need, that's the purpose of music. I have had so many people write and say, your program brought me through cancer. Your program helped me heal from a, a, a terrible disease. Your program it gave me it gave me the faith to keep going. The joy of music kept kept. More people say that than anything I say. That it's it it brings something out in them. Not just you know not just listening to organ music, but. The combination of all of God's gift is so important. The gift of music, the gift of art, the gift of architecture, the gift of scenic beauty, the gift of composition, of the faith of the people who built the churches. Uh, it's all together. It's all together in one and the joy of music and it was all together in one in in my life but for me it's not just the joy of music it's the joy which the lord um, the god almighty can bring into our lives that's the joy of music loud enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Thanks for watching. Go to AIBTV.com forward slash donate to support programming like this. All contributions are tax deductible.